What's going on everybody, Dimitri here. In this video, we're gonna learn how to do a stylized render like you would imagine in the Game of Thrones series. I know, I know, it's been a few years, but that style is still quite relevant with architecture because it shows us a little bit of extra detail and a little bit of extra texture, which sometimes goes a long way to describe what's going on in the project in regards to context. So here's the final result that we work with. Let's start building this again from scratch. I'm gonna create a new file first off with the OSM add-on. I'm going to import the default one and the default one is New York. Now, depending whether you have the free version or the paid version, there's a few different settings here. I'll just use 3D Simple and let's click on import. And by default, it imports Midtown Manhattan with the Empire State Building being in the center. All right, so it's imported, it's, it's large, it's metric units, so the whole Midtown Manhattan is a kilometer by 500 meters. So we need to change our camera settings a little bit. If we use 3000 meters and let's change the clip start to something like one. Great, now let's select all the objects and press shift Q if you have material utilities add-on enabled and then click on remove all material slots. So we want to remove all the materials. So we're just left with blank. For rendering settings, set up cycles for the world. Let's use a sky texture plugged into a background and change the rotation to 220 degrees. Now let's go to viewport preview. Let's add a plane. This will be our ground plane. So we want to make it large enough that encompasses everything. I'm noticing some elements because they're curves, their material is not being erased. So we have to do that manually from the OSM map. And let's turn off some things like footways and cycleways. We don't want to render those out and pedestrian. And let's change this to roads. Just have one that we can call roads. So let's select all of the curve elements and control L and link materials. So now they should all have the roads material. We can test that really easily by going to the object. So now we have our roads object here. Cool, so that's the base. This is already looking quite good. You can use that. Um, what's going on here? I think I have two suns. So let's get rid of the actual sun because the only thing we'll be using is the texture. Now remember this sky texture only works in Psychos. It doesn't work in Eevee. Great, so this is our base. And now let's start working on getting a nice texture. Let's first create a material. We will call it textured wood. Let's go to Lily Surface Scraper and we want to go to Ambient CG, Explore All Assets, and let's look at wood. I already found one that I quite like, this one, wood 66. So all we need to do is copy the URL, then go back to Blender and import from clipboard within Lily Surface Scraper. And what it does is it automatically downloads the version. Let's use the 2K JPEG version. And now we have our texture. Of course, it's not looking quite right yet. We need to fix the scale. And we will also delete a few things here. We're not going to use displacement or roughness. We're only going to use the color. So if you wanted to, you could also go and just download this manually. Now, conveniently, with the little surface scraper add-on, we have all of our connections the way they need to be. Let's create a new connection with the scale by dragging it out and typing value. Let's change the type of mapping to texture and change this to something like 20. Still not changing because we need to UV unwrap everything. So select everything, go into edit mode, select all by pressing A and then U and then sure UVW box. Now for this to come up, sure UVW box, you have to have the, the magic UV add-on enabled or you can download sure uvw separately great so now we have the texture wrapped it's not that nice just yet so let's play a little bit with the rotation let's put 45 for the z rotation so now we should have something as an angle and it would be great to also apply this to the ground plane so this has an interesting name which will change to texture so when we go to our plane let's rename it to ground and type texture. And now that's looking way off because we have this object scale that's quite large. So let's apply the scale, control A scale, go in it and U, sure UVW box. And now that's probably a little bit too small. So let's scale this object down by 20%. So S and then 0.2, then apply the scale, go again into edit mode, U, 
sure uvw box and now let's scale it out so now it's a little bit larger so we can see some of the grain and that's what we want here we don't want to make this too refined great so we have our base in here and as you can see it's looking like crap at the moment so let's start making this look up and feel a little bit better the first thing we can do is change the scale so let's try something a little bit larger so 30 so we can read a bit more of the grain that's already looking a bit better so the secret to making this super good is really with a couple of noise textures which emphasizes the different facts so let's add a noise texture shift a search noise texture we want to use the same mapping that we have from here vector and i would really like to understand what's happening with our noise texture so i like to plug this in separately into the material output so we get it to look the way we want to get it to look like so that's the current result let's play with the roughness if we increase the roughness to maybe two now let's increase the detail to 10 and you see right away we have a lot more refinement a lot more detail but it's maybe a bit too uniform so let's add a color ramp so shift a search color ramp plug that in here and let's play with the dark and the white values we want to push them out that's pretty good so we know that this is going to work quite well for us this setup here so we're going to use this setup a few times and what we're going to do is first multiply it a couple of times so we make some specific areas darker within our model and then we're going to add it as well and each time we'll change the scale a little bit so let's put this into here we have our color plug this back into here and now shift a color mix color plug that into here change the type from mix to multiply duplicate shift d and plug it in there change the type from multiply to screen let's duplicate this Control shift d to duplicate with the connection intact and we want to change this scale a little bit so they're not exactly overlapping so the first one we'll use for our multiplication of color so let's just see the result here you see some areas are getting darker and some areas are staying lighter and now let's do the same with the second one which is going to go into multiply now for some reason the screen has a very strong effect so we only need to apply that ever so slightly great so now let's add another color ramp or duplicate this color ramp plug it into the result and plug that into roughness so instead of having a roughness of one we're going to have the roughness being controlled by the same texture that we have over here. Now at the moment it's very smooth, it's very polished, it looks like a polished veneer table. So we can take this value quite down and this one here as well to make it a bit rougher. Now only the darkest areas are shiny and maybe we don't want them to be 100% shiny so we can change that black color to be a little bit more gray. Now let's duplicate this, Control shift d Control a is my hotkey. So then let's add a bump node, bump. Plug this into height and plug this into normal. So now we also have some normal information and maybe we can increase the distance and the strength. Let's put this back to black. Maybe it goes a little bit in the middle here. So we have a bit of bumps that we can see and i'm thinking this gray might be a bit too gray so let's bring it down a little bit it might look really nice now with the roughness and the reflections that we get this is starting to look much better but i think what would improve this even more is having another level of noise textures above so we'll use that again the same way that we use these two so i'm going to duplicate Control shift d so this is going to stay as multiply and we'll plug this result into here and then this result into screens so we have two noise textures they have a dark effect and then we have one that has a light effect i'm going to plug this back into here so i have a better understanding of what the scale is doing now when we have such high roughness the scale doesn't have that much of an effect so maybe we bring the roughness bit down and the detail a bit down so what we want to do with this textured version of the noise is have larger areas that are darker or lighter but still blend in smoothly with the rest of it and in that respect i'm also thinking that perhaps we don't want to use these objects here we want to use some other object to drive the scale of it so i will add a default cube 
go into here for the noise texture. Let's add another texture coordinate node. Choose this cube that we put in here. Plug in object for the vector here. The idea is that we want to have a uniform scale. Now we can either change the size of the cube and that will increase the scale and it should be the same scale throughout. So I want to make this scale really large, quite large. So we have these big levels up and down. That's about the right level that I want to show. Maybe let's make this 140 or 130. That should be pretty good. Great, so that's the right texture. It's quite different than what we have here. One is we can say at the micro level, so that makes local small variations. And the other one is at the macro level, so we have bigger variations around. So with everything working correctly, let's plug this back into surface and play with the values. And now I get a result that you can't even tell that it's tiled anymore, right? Because we have so many different variations happening. Like if we turn all of these off, the tiling becomes very clear. But the minute we start to turn these up, you can see the tiling starts to disappear. Now, I do wonder what will happen if I swap these two around. So let's see, we can create a node here. So let's duplicate this and put it in there and let's delete that. So that's pretty interesting as well. That adds an extra level of variation is having the dark after we put in some of the bright elements in there already. Great, so it's it's really moody, it's very textured, and we have a really strong sense of what the scale of this thing might be, which is, for the most part, something miniature. So now let's go back to the world and do a couple of settings here. Let's make the background one, and the sun intensity, we can turn that down a little bit, maybe to 0.8. Now it might be a bit too bright, so let's go back to our object here and let's increase the dark textures. I want to make the finish a little bit less mirrored and we can decrease the brightness of the original wood texture. So let's bypass all of these things and let's plug in the original wood texture, which looks like that. So it's quite bright. So now if we go to Shift A, Color, Hue Saturation Value, Change the saturation, so we desaturate a little bit more and change the value to something like 0.8. Now we can also add RGB curves. So if you put these in here, they work the exact same way like your curves do in Photoshop or Affinity Photo. So now I want to take our textures just a notch down so we have the right amount of mix. Back into the world, this sky might be a bit too strong, so we can turn it down a little or we can play with the color management. So I have it set as high contrast. Let's try none and see what that looks like. Not very exciting, is it? So let's try the strength to 0.8. And the background in this case is might be a little bit too much. So let's make a plain black background by adding a mix shader. Plug this into here. Let's have a pure black background node. And for the factor, we use camera array. I'm going to press Ctrl H to hide all the unconnected sockets. This glow here works really nicely with those kinds of reflections here. So now if we go back to the object, we have a few more things to do and we'll probably be in a good shape. So I like to add bevel, which is so, so easy, especially when we're doing this kind of bump workflow, because we don't need to mix normals or anything. So if we search for bevel node, plug that into the normal here change the radius to something like 1.5 and the samples to let's say six so right away we have all these nice bevels so another nice thing that we can do here is add a bit of extra ambient occlusion so shift a search ambient occlusion and let's duplicate this multiply put it in here and let's multiply the ambient occlusion now let's just see what it is doing on its own and we need to change the distance to something like 10 so we can start to see it maybe even more like 20 30 there you go so that's good so that's going to help add a little bit of extra depth to our stylized render let's turn it on so you can see how it's making some areas quite a bit darker great and with this kind of stylized render i'm actually thinking that we want more saturation instead of less so let's make this value here 1.2 that's looking pretty good so now let's go around and see any kind of details that we think might not work correctly but everything seems to work correctly and the nice thing about this approach is that we're mixing a raster texture with some procedural textures 
So it should look good whether we're really zoomed out like here or whether we're really zoomed in into a small and specific detail like there. So this is really starting to look like some kind of uh, either maquette, physical maquette, or it's starting to look like something really stylized from Game of Thrones, for example. To add to that sense of feeling, what I like to do is add a camera and then we'll add some aperture. So let's find an angle that we like maybe something like this let's add a camera shift a camera and then view align view align active camera to view now let's click on the camera and adjust the clip end to be something like 3000 meters in my case and let's decrease the focal length so it's a little bit more wide angle and i'm going to zoom this in by pressing gg or rather g z and then z again so we get a little bit closer to our object that's looking pretty good. And we want to really portray this as it is kind of this object that's sitting, whether it's on a table or in a blank space or in a studio. Now let's adjust our secondary material here, which is for the roads. And for that, we're going to use the exact same setup we have here for the one that we call texture. So I'm going to select everything, control C, click on the roads, delete everything, control V to paste. And that should work on its own as it is, but instead of uv we're going to use object if we want to it might look nice if we make it a notch darker and change up the scale a little bit maybe larger or smaller i'm not sure what but just something that gives you a slight sense of difference maybe they're a bit brighter or well, they look pretty much the same don't they so let's try something that's really dark maybe we change some of these scales up and we increase the factor yep that's looking pretty good look at that building what could help now emphasize the fact that we're doing something that's meant to look like a maquette is add some depth of field so to do that we'll add a target for the camera and i think this detail here looks really nice so let's use that so shift a i'm going to use a plane axis empty let's increase the size so we can see it a little bit clearer go to the camera and Enable depth of field, click on the empty for the focus object. And now the aperture has to be really low. We have to emphasize that because this is really far away from the camera, right? So any kind of typical f-stop, even to 1.4, let's try it, 1.4, won't add any level of blur. So we have to go to something artificially low. Point, even 0 0.001, that's starting to show something. So let's try 0 0.001. Now that's a little bit too much. So let's try point. 0 0.0008 how's that looking that looks like it's giving us the right level blur maybe it's too much so let's go back to 0 0.001 yeah that's working pretty nice so now back in the world settings let's rotate the sun around see if we can find another angle that gives us a interesting level of the highlights so wherever we've added that bevel and that shines really nicely. So that's what I'm looking for is that kind of effect here. We're pretty much done here. I'm just looking now and I would like to decrease the depth of field a bit more by going into the camera settings and changing this to maybe 0 0.003. Let's try 0 0.002. The idea is just to have a little, just enough that we sense that there is this miniature version in there. Great, so with everything ready, let's render. Let's adjust the depth of the camera a little bit. So maybe we go to 30. Now I really want to capture the top of the Empire State Building. So let's move the camera up and then looking slightly more facing down. That's it. And maybe that goes down to 28. So now we can lower that down a little. That's looking pretty good. F12 to render. Once it's rendered, let's save it. Alt S. I will save it as a PNG. So it's a little bit higher quality. And I would like to do a little bit of post processing. I am saying a little bit quite a few times. Infinity Photo. Okay, so here's our base. Let's duplicate it with Control J. And the tone mapping, that's my secret weapon, let's say, in uh, Affinity Photo, because it just makes it so easy to get a much, much better looking Im image. Let's turn down the tone compression to zero and increase the local contrast. And this is, this is it here. This is my secret weapon. You've got it now. You should be good to go. Local contrast does an amazing job every single time. And now we can continue to stylize this a little bit more. So maybe we see a bit more of the lights and the darks. We could turn down the contrast a bit, decrease the saturation, increase the vibrance. These are things that I do to most of my images. Maybe let's increase the brightness a bit more. You can go with this sort of a faded out like photograph look or with something that's a bit 
in better contrast. I like to go with a slightly faded out look. Let's play with the tonal compression now. That might be a bit too much. So local contrast for this image looks like about 39 might work pretty well. Let's play with the saturation. So minus 20 seems to work quite well. And then let's add a bit of detail refinement. So increase the radius a bit and the amount. And we're good to go. Press apply. So now let's compare. That's the raw output that we got from Blender. And this is with just, as you saw it, a very, very quick post process. Of course, we can take this a bit further and make it look like it's some kind of dirty photograph by going online and looking at dirty textures. Let's pick one. This one is quite nice. It's a weird website. We you know what? We don't even need that level. Okay, it's done. That's I guess that's fine. Let's open that. Let's drag that in here. Make it a bit smaller like that. And now let's change this from to what do we want? Let's do something like screen. Yeah, that's looking really nice. And let's decrease the intensity to something like 10%. So you can barely see the effect, but it's definitely there. Let's duplicate this, Control J. We're basically doing the same thing that we were doing in Blender with the materials now. So we're changing it up a little bit. Maybe rotate it ever so slightly. And this one, instead of screen, we'll use it as multiply. There's multiply. There is multiply. And now let's see what looks good. Something like that. And that's it. So the base render, a little bit of post process and very subtle image overlay. So we got this really cool looking texturized stylized image that looks like now i mean it could be a photograph of a maquette of new york city what do you guys think about this process let me know in the comments anything else you would like to see if you like these kind of videos make sure you subscribe and hit the like button it definitely helps me a bit probably makes you feel better as well and file is available on patreon if you'd like to support me and see more of this work, you can become one of my patrons and see you guys next time.